corners on the, the outer part of the bag. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to pull out, I've trimmed the corners out at an angle. And so now I'm going to match up this seam. It might be easier if I press it open just for visual purposes. And to be honest, if I were giving this tote bag to anyone other than just myself, I, the, the interior would be very different. But I only have a few hours and I really, I just really wanted a different tote bag. It's so cold, so wet, so rainy. Um, it felt funny carrying my little French uh, print blue and very baby blue and pink <laughs> bag to the gym. Over the course of the last few days, I've just been like, yeah, that just doesn't feel right. So, that is what prompted me to decide this morning that I would do this. Alright, so I'm, I'm kind of pressing this seam open for visual representation um, of these boxed corners. Um, so, I'll do that real quick. Quick. Alrighty. So as you can see, we have the seam that goes across the bottom of the bag and then the side seams that go up the sides. And what we want to do to make this corner, this bottom edge, is we want to line up the bottom seam with the side seam and you can feel it through the fabric you can honestly feel that and we're going to take whatever means of measurement you have a ruler <clears throat> just any type of landmark that you have available. This should not stop you from making a boxed corner. All right, so I'm gonna come down. I kind of just wanna keep it small, so I'm gonna make this an inch. Mark it with my friction pen. Okay, so we mark that just like that, and then pin it to hold it in place nice and tight. And then we'll whip the bag around and we will do the other side. And currently we are working on the outer fabric, the fabric that is seen by the world. Alrighty. So we match up those two seams, the bottom, across the bottom and across the side seam. And you can feel when they're lined up with your fingertips. And they kind of naturally want to lay on top of the except for the fact that this bag weighs 40 pounds already. Okay, here we go. There. All right, so we just measure down one inch. Most of these rulers have this, this awesome grid. I can see that this is all right. close and to keep it from shifting too much I'll pin that all right I'm going to stitch across those and I'll be right back okay 
So with those two um, corners boxed, I'm just going to trim the excess fabric off those corners. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this bag because I want to see what it looks like size-wise um, for the lining uh, corner. I need to know how much I can box it and you know where I need to do that because I'm going to cut that fabric out, um, which is a different method for doing a boxed corner. I like the fact that the interfacing, the fleece, is on the lining side and not this side. Um, it feels uh, feels good to me. I like that. All right, so I'm poking it in, and. Oh, I guess I failed to mention now that I go back and review in my mind what we were just what I was doing. Um, for my, this is a gym bag for me, and um, I don't know if you go to the gym or if you hike. Um, a lot of times, and I I noticed this after I made my first bag for the gym. The um, The interior of this type of bag, for its purpose, tends to get wet. <laughs> whether you are using a water bottle at the gym, whether you are wearing clothes that you need to change out of at the gym once you've finished your workout, um, it just gets really wet. And I, my the last bag I made myself... Um, I lined it with a, um, a vinyl, and while I thought that was a brilliant idea, it really wasn't a brilliant idea because everything stayed wet once it got wet in there. So the, that is why I chose this time to just put my, my fleecy interfacing on the inside. And I think if you give that a try, you will understand why I'm really jazzed about it right now it it's it feels so good it um it's it feels like it's got a lot of of good body and i feel like the inside of this bag is designed to absorb moisture so when i give it a whirl today we'll see what happens but okay so i am happy that i've got these little box corners down here but remember that the um, the lining part of this bag has not been completed yet. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it in, give it a press, because it doesn't need to be boxed on the inside. Um, I'm just going to fold it and, and just do a blanket stitch over the top like this and tuck it down in there. Um, I really like the way this, this bag feels. And then I came up with an idea for handles. So once I get the, the uh, bag lining completed, stitched, and placed where it belongs in the bag, I will come back for the final two steps. One is the um, top stitch across the top opening. And then, of course, the second is the set of handles. Um, I need to decide on how long I want those to be. And how I want to attach them to my bag. I think I have um, 
I think I have come up with an idea, keeping in mind, of course, that I'm on limited time because my appointment at the gym is fast approaching. And I have probably an hour drive ahead of me because it's raining. It will be the mid-morning commute on a Tuesday. And people are generally, I find, well, I don't know. Last night's commute was not fun coming home. he, I had a had an angry, angry driver who forgot um, he forgot that um, the roads were wet, very wet. I, tried to, I don't know how you could forget because it was pouring down rain. And he wanted to hitch a ride in the back of my truck. And my truck also has a very big trailer hitch. And I kept thinking, oh, you poor misguided soul. You're about to eat a trailer hitch. I feel very bad for you. So I gave my, um, there was a police officer, a car, there was a car, myself, a another car in front of me and then in front of him was a police officer and I was kind of hoping that the police officer would notice that I had this insane tailgater um, who was very angry coming home from work obviously on a Monday I felt really bad um, but we're, we're going down a hill and you know roads are slick it's just just not good Anyway, um, he, he just about, uh, had tailgate for, or not tailgate, trailer hitch for supper last night, but he got lucky and, uh, was able to get, pull over before he slammed into the back of me. And of course the police officer was busy elsewhere. I, I truly appreciate them. I just wish that sometimes I really do wish that something would happen and these careless drivers could just get called for their crazy driving behavior. All right, I'm going to do a blanket stitch off of my sewing machine across the bottom of this and when I come back, I'll have the handles, and we're going to talk about where they're going to go. And we'll top stitch across the top. We'll apply the handles. And um, I will have my tote bag for my gym today. So hold on just a moment. All righty. So I've done the blanket stitch across the bottom. I just used to stitch off my sewing machine. And I had a fabulous idea for another project. It's going to require some thought and planning. Um... But this is so soft, um, it's not soft enough for a gym mat, but with additional fleece, this could actually be a project. If I don't top stitch across here and I put fleece lining on both sides, where you could literally just pull this out. You could use it as a gym bag. And then when you get to the gym, you could just make this a little bit longer, obviously. Not much longer. Because really, for me, it's just a matter of what I'm sitting on. Um, but I could actually create something that you could, if this were also full of fleece, that you could just roll up. Okay, so there's another idea for another day. All right. Um, you could even use it as a changing pad for your for your infant. Or oh gosh, just a million ideas. A picnic placemat. Um, I'm having fun. 
All right, so I'm gonna push this in to here. I know you can't feel this, but it fits beautifully across the bottom of my bag, even though it isn't boxed, because that blanket stitch wants to open up and kind of do like this across the bottom, and it feels really good down in there. All right. It's very nice. Yep. I don't even know if that would be visible to see. Yeah, it's hard to see in there, but yes, it's it's fitting very nice. Okay, so now what I would like to do is go across the top with um, just a straight top stitch right across there, but um, I'm going to go get the handles. Um, they're in a... I don't have enough room in my sewing room, and I barely have enough room, and it's not because I don't have enough room in this house. It's just I have too much stuff. It's becoming an issue. So I need to clear off my sewing table, which is in a different room, um, and then get that up here and kind of rearrange a little bit. So I'll have my cutting table and a little bit better able to visually represent what I'm doing. So right now I'm going to go get those handles and I will be back. Okay, so I decided to go with the line uh, lining fabric for my handles. And these two pieces right here were what was left uh, from the cuts that I made for the lining. Um, these are now uh, five inches wide, I believe. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, they are right at five inches, and so I cut a strip of the lining fabric at it's just a little over five inches. Um, this, I want this width because if I fold this to the center and fold this to the center, and then, and this is just guessing, fold this in half, that's about the width I want on my hand when I'm carrying my bag. Um, so the length is kind of my uh, sticking point here. I'm trying to decide if I cut this in half, um, Think. I'm just going to have to play with it and see what I think about Actually, I do think that's about right. Um, however, I think I am going to add the extra because I can always cut it off as I'm going and then this is just going to make it a little bit easier. Plus, I won't feel like I'm wasting these two short pieces of fabric. So what I'm going to do is, if I line these up like this, and stitch edge to edge, then that becomes, ooh, that's gonna be an interesting, I may have to do a straight, straight across. Yeah, because then these stripes are going this way. If I stitch it this way, it still is going to be... Isn't that weird? Hmm. So I could do 
a diagonal stitch. Ouch. Tired burning myself. My goodness. Let's see here. Pull this. I'm just kind of giving myself a a quick peek at what that's going to look like with that directional. There's really not much I can do and this would this would actually hide the seam a little better, but it's still going to look. Um, and if I do it this way, hmm. Okay, I'll yeah. All right, I'm going to put one on each end. We'll just do it that way, um, and then I'll have that that length to kind of play with. All right, when I come back. Okay, I decided to go diagonal. Um, it didn't really matter one way or the other. Uh, it's not bias cut. So, um, any case, I just decided to go diagonal. I prefer that look. So, and then I can just press this open and cut off those little wings, and I'll have extra fabric, etc., etc. Um, Plus, you know, we all need practice on perfecting different techniques. Obviously, I slid way off on this. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. All right. <clears throat> so, I'm having one of those days. That's not going to be pretty. Oh, well, I'm going to go ahead and press it anyway. We'll see what happens. <clears throat> Oops, my sewing machine is giving me fits today. I'm not exactly sure what's going on with George, but I'm not happy. Basically, I'm not happy if George isn't happy. I have a big sewing project I have got to do, and I can't have George messing up. <clears throat> Even though I do have several other sewing machines I could use. I really rely on my Bernina. And um, the one the one sewing shop, you know, uh, sewing back center that we had, that was Bernina authorized, um, closed. And I am not gonna drive the distance that it would require me to drive to get to that center. It's just, it's very unfortunate that that has happened because as much as I love my Bernina, I don't love my Bernina enough to drive a hundred miles to a service center. So I'm really, really hoping that we will be gifted with a new Bernina authorized service center soon. Okay, so I have basically folded this in half even though it is completely uneven. And now I am going to bring in my outer edges to that center fold as evenly as I can. I need to move my bag here. It's, all right. So, I'm going to go along, press this, sorry, press this um, the way we're all familiar with. I, I My distraction is that I'm trying to decide if I want to put some fleece lining in here uh, to give it some body. <clears throat> but I haven't quite decided yet. I don't think I need to. I mean, it's not like I'm carrying a lot of heavy things in this bag. It's basically just my membership fob, my my keys, my wallet, my cell phone, my bottle of water, 
It's not a whole lot of heavy, heavy stuff as of yet. I suppose that could change, and at some point I'm going to think to myself, darn it, why didn't I do those handles? But, oh, goodness, I just keep hitting the, and that's another project. The camera has to be dealt with very, very soon. It's, I'm not a techie. I can mechanic my sewing machine all day long, but I sure can't mechanic the computer. And having that issue yesterday cut into my sewing time, and I did not appreciate it. I mean, while I understand that there are certain levels of, of work that you have to do to your computer, I'm truly a plug and play kind of person. And I don't like the nonsense that, you know, when you load something on your computer and all of a sudden, you know, and you're using a disc, you're doing it legally, you purchased a disc, and all of a sudden it's got some kind of stupid virus or um, whatever something thing is that uh, can mess up your computer. Or it's not, I guess basically what happened is it's not the, the latest um, updated version of GigaWare for that camera. And I found that to be extremely irritating. It's like, what? Why? Just why? So I'm obviously dealing with those issues. Not my favorite thing in the world. <clears throat> okay, so I kind of feel like that even though I have fabrics on either side of the longer strip with their, um, with the design going in a different direction. It's not as hideous as I had feared it would be. Um, I think there's enough motion in this print that it kind of distracts your eye from the fact that it is going in a different direction, at least for just a minute. You kind of don't catch it right out the gate. Okay. So my plan now is I'm going to have to cut this in half because I don't have enough to go from one end of the bag to the other, that wraparound tote bag handle design. Um, so I will, I think what I'm planning to do is just go ahead and cut it in half as it is right now. That will give me the two raw edges here that, and then I'll have the two raw edges here and I can finish them all four off at, as they are identical. Um, And then I will attach, I think that's going to be about, yeah, yep, yeah, that's going to be about the right length for both sides of the tote bag. So that's what will have happened when I come back. All right, so I have the handles completed. They're just stitched down one side across the, the ends and stitched down the other side. I chose not to do a third row of stitching in the middle. I just felt like that was too much with all of this design um, going on on those on that fabric. And then I top stitched across the top of my bag. And now I'm going to measure in. Um, I'm thinking with the top of my bag being at basically 15 inches. Um, I could use the width of this. So 
see what I think of this. I'll have to square it up across the bottom. Okay. Yeah, I like it there better. Alrighty. And I'm not going to put this one on yet because I do have to put this through the open arm of my sewing machine. And the way I plan to stitch this, um, is I'm going to just do a big box. Um, I might do uh, an X. I'm not sure at this point. I do want to double check and make sure that the... It looks like I'm kind of... I'm going at an angle here. Yeah. So, if that... Okay, and then so we're at three and three. 